teach, we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. My eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Good evening, viewers. A happy Sunday evening goes out to you. Welcome to another Sunday night service with the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We are so happy that you have decided to spend some time with us this evening. For the past week, we have been looking at the theme, Faith is the Victory. Faith is the victory, and we believe that the topic of faith could never be exhausted. And so tonight, we'll also be looking at this theme. And I believe that some of you in the audience could very well look back on your life and bring out several accounts of times where your faith in God was what really brought you through, was what really gave you the victory. And this is why we could sing the song, We've Come this far by faith. Doing what? Leaning on his arms. Amen. Before we go any further, just bow your heads with me as we invite God's presence here this evening. Wonderful, merciful God, we want to thank you for yet another opportunity to proclaim your word to your people. I pray that this evening will be a blessing to all to the viewers and participants, and may your name be glorified this evening. In your son's most wonderful name I pray, amen, amen. Before we move to our song service team, who are already stationed and ready to lead you out in song, I would like you to do just one thing for me. I would like you to take just a few seconds to do some missionary work. Whether you're looking at us on Facebook or on YouTube, I want you first to like. If you're on YouTube, you could like the service link. If you're on Facebook, we don't want to like. We want you to love it. Love the service link. And then we want you to share it. So go ahead, share it with your friends, your family, and your coworkers. Share it with anyone you believe may need to know about Jesus. I'll give you just about a few seconds to get that done. All right, I believe that you would have shared and loved and liked the service. So to all of you who shared, who loved and who liked, I just want to say a huge thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing your missionary work. So at this time, we will now move over to our song service team, Sisters Sorana Philip, Sisters Oneska St. Paul, and 
Colleen Noel, who will be accompanied by Pastor Joseph Boeing. We thank you for viewing, and at this moment, we are about to start our song service. We're asking that you sing along with us. Our first song would be 517, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, Thou Lamb of Calvary. Teach me how I would be their savior, holy thine.
and rose again for me. My soul is resting on the Word, the living Word of God. Salvation in my Savior's name, salvation through His blood. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. The great physician heals the sick. The lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed. For me his life he gave. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, ladies, for leading us out in such wonderful singing. I'm sure that our audience were truly blessed, and I could have imagined that some of you were even singing along. Thank you. Thank you. If you are just tuning in, welcome once again to our Sunday night service. We will be exploring the theme, Faith is the Victory. That is, Faith is the Victory. As Christians, we know that faith is a necessity. It is impossible to be a Christian without faith. Actually, the Bible says that without faith it is, I'm sure if you could, some of you could finish that sentence for me, without faith it is, that's right, it is impossible, very impossible to please God. In the book, Gospel Workers, page 255, Ellen G. White writes, When men are as devoted as Elijah was and possess the faith that he had, God will reveal himself as he did then. When men plead with the Lord as Jacob did, the results that were seen then will again be seen. Power will come from God in answer to the prayer of faith. Amen. And as some of you could imagine now, it is our prayer time. If you have any prayer requests, please feel free to post them in the chat. And our prayer warriors and intercessors are more than ready to present prayers of faith on your behalf. As you do so, allow me to introduce our intercessor for the evening. He is no other than Elder Emotep Baptiste. Let's unite our hearts and minds in prayer as he delivers a prayer of faith on our behalf. Let us pray. Most kind and gracious eternal God and Father, what a wonderful opportunity and privilege is ours to come before you tonight. We pray, Almighty God, as we come before your humble throne of grace that you would look down upon us and have mercy upon us. Tonight, Almighty God, we want to invite you into our presence, and we want to pray that you would take charge of the entire night's proceedings. We pray, Almighty God, that the entire night's proceedings is going to be a tremendous blessing to all our viewers. Almighty God, we want to lift them up before you wheresoever they are at this point in time. We pray, Almighty God, that they would be willing to put down whatsoever they are doing and that they would tune in. We pray, Almighty God, that even as they tune in, that they would receive a tremendous blessing. Almighty God, we come before you knowing that you are a God who loves us, a God who has promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So we lift up our viewers before you who are being plagued with various problems of different sorts. You know each and all of them by name and nature. Some are plagued with financial problems. Some have been affected by the recent passage of the hurricane and they have lost their property. Some people have lost lives. They have been affected in one way or another. Still some are suffering with marital problems, family breakdown, 
and we pray, Almighty God, for your divine intervention. Even those who are not enjoying the best of health, those who are stuck between a rock and a hard place, those who are wondering whether or not they should be vaccinated, we pray, Almighty God, for your wisdom, your guidance, and your leading. And we pray, Almighty God, that you are going to come true for these individuals. And we pray, Almighty God, that you would help them to realize that you are still God, you are still able, you are still capable, and you can do it again for them. We pray, Almighty God, that even in the midst of all the natural disasters and all the calamities and all the crises that we are faced with in our world today, that men, women, boys, and girls would realize the signs of the times and that they would run to Jesus and ensure that they are wrapped up in his saving arms. We pray, Almighty God, for those who are delaying, may they make haste and ensure that they are under the bloodstained banners of Prince Emmanuel so that they can be saved in your eternal kingdom before it is fatally too late. Bless us again, we pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' most holy name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Brother Baptiste, for this prayer of faith. And I believe that we shall have the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I think it's fitting that we pause for a melodious cause. Brother Kyle Salhab will now favor us with a special item of music. Some 
Thank you very much, Brother Kyle. And I'm happy that you are using your talents for the Lord. Please keep using it and blessing hearts for Jesus. Our scripture reading this evening is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6 to 10. I invite you to grab your Bibles wherever they are so that we could read together. Remember, it's taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 6 to 10. Let's read together. And it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Amen. Amen. Are you like Abraham looking forward to that city whose architect and builder is God? I am, and by faith, I hope that you and I would be able to not only look forward to that city, but would one day be able to inhabit that city. What a wonderful day that would be. Amen. As you still ponder, on the words of the scripture reading, Sister Cindy Horsford will fill the atmosphere with some more melodious singing. Right after Sister Horsford sings, we'll receive our main course for the evening. The chef is a servant of God and a friend to man. His name is Pastor Oliver Scott, the current executive secretary of our conference. Please stay tuned. You do not want to miss a thing. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning we
has mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, I have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. To me, pardon for sin and a peace that endure. Die on the presence to cherish. Pleasant good evening to everyone. It's such a wonderful a privilege to be with you this evening and to share with you God's word. We just came from that wonderful series with our children and God really used them in a powerful way. And tonight we continue along the same theme. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, I captivate the attention of every viewer and every listener to your word. May each person be tremendously blessed by this message. But above all, help us to apply it so that we can have the victory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Faith is the victory. Now, some of you might be good in the kitchen. You were able to, you know, mix some nice ingredients and come up with something good. But whatever it may be that you're making in the kitchen, you better be sure to have all of the necessary ingredients there. You know, when you are making bread, for example, uh, you may have the flour, you may have the butter, you may have the water, you may have the yeast, you may have whatever you may desire to put in there. But if you do not have the salt, or even for some other menu, you may not have the salt, even though you have had the other ingredients, if the salt is missing, 
the food or whatever you have may not be as tasty as you desire. As a matter of fact, you may not want to have any of it because somehow it is tasteless. I'm submitting to us tonight that oftentimes in life, there are people who have many things, even the material things that this world has to offer, but they are missing the important ingredient. They are missing the most important ingredient to make their life victorious. I wish to submit to us tonight that the most important ingredient to make your life victorious is the ingredient of faith. Because faith is indeed the victory, hallelujah, that overcomes the world. Without faith in life, you will give up when you should be pressing on. But when you have faith in life, even though the odds are against you, even though you're between the devil and the deep blue sea, somehow you are able to keep on keeping on because you still have faith and faith keeps you pressing on to the end. Somebody knows what I'm talking about because you have been through thick and thin, through hell and high water, been through the challenges of your life, but because you had faith and held on to faith, you persevered and won the victory and you are here today still in your right mind, still alive and well because you have had faith. In the book of Luke chapter 18, the Bible speaks of the matter of faith but now in the form of a question. And this important question is posed by Jesus Christ. I want to submit to us today that there are many people who do not have the victory because of the absence of faith. And whenever you lack faith, especially faith in God, you are living dangerously. So here's the verse, verse 8 of Luke chapter 18. Uh, the Bible is speaking about God, through a parable, uh, given a woman victory. Like he has given to all of us who have faith in him, victory. And so the Bible says, Jesus speaking says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. In other words, when it comes to those who have faith in God, God will show up in their situation. And not only would God show up, but my God will show off. He will show off his power on our behalf. And I thank God that there are many of us on this platform tonight who can testify that in your life, God showed up and showed off on your behalf. Nevertheless, Jesus went on to say, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That's a question. A big question. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Jesus is really suggesting that in the end of time, that there will be a missing ingre ingredient in the lives of many. And the missing ingredient will be faith. Lord have mercy. The question now is, what is faith? In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible tells us very clearly what faith is. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, the Bible says here, you can read along with me wherever you are. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith is to hold on to that which you desire. Uh, maybe you desire a husband back in the days and you saw that man and your faith held on to him 
and you persevered, vice versa. Maybe your desire was a wife. You saw that young lady, and your faith held unto her as though it is for real, and you persevered, you pursued. Faith kept you going on, pressing for the mark. And by the grace of God, she is now your wife. That's what I'm talking about. Faith is holding on to that which you desire. It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But my friends, the most important thing that you ought to desire in life is salvation. Is to be saved when Jesus comes again. And faith, my friend, is to hold on to salvation. Faith is to grab salvation. Faith is to have salvation. Faith is to experience salvation. And you cannot have salvation. You cannot be saved without faith. My friends, so faith is indeed a victory. Because the greatest victory that you can experience in life is that of salvation, of making it into the kingdom of God. And that becomes a reality by faith. So what is the effect of faith? In verse 5, we're still in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. The Bible says in verse 5, you can read along with me. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see Dead and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Somebody say amen. That's why you're here. That's why you were created. You were created to please God. And like Enoch, your life must be lived in such a way that it's pleasing to God. But if you're going to live your life in a pleasing way to God, in an acceptable way to God, you must have faith in God. You will not bother to please God if you do not believe God and believe in God. It was because Enoch believed God and believed in God, believed that God exists, that he is the creator of the ends of the earth. That's why he was able to live a life that was pleasing to God. His life of faith was so pleasing to God that God took him into his kingdom. Somebody say amen. I want to suggest to you tonight that if you are ever going to enter heaven like Enoch, you must have faith. You have to hold on to it right here. And right now, you cannot wait until Jesus comes to accept him in your life by faith. Right here, right now, while you're looking at me, listening to me, and you have the breath of life, you must hold on to salvation. You must hold on to heaven. And you must allow that faith to cause you to live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God, come what may. That is true faith. In John chapter 11, verse 25, also verse 26, Jesus speaks of this saving faith. Says, the Bible says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So when you have faith in God, even though the temporal death may come your way, we have the blessed hope that we shall live with Jesus again. For the resurrection is sure, and we claim it by faith. The Bible says, Christ says, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. My friends today, when you, like Enoch, believe in God and have faith in God, it will put you in a position to live the eternal life where you will not face eternal death. And so that's how faith is so important. 
It is the important ingredient that is missing in the life of many persons who are on their way to a devil's hell. Lord, have mercy. So let's look at the importance of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. The Bible says to us, watch this, watch this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What a powerful text. In other words, faith is so important that you cannot allow it to be the missing ingredient in your life. You must ensure that you have that saving faith because without it, you just cannot please God. You cannot be like Enoch and you will never enter the kingdom of God. For the Bible says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You must believe that God exists. And that's why my heart goes out for persons who believe in the theory of evolution. Uh, my, my, my sympathy, my, my condolences for persons who believe in the theory of evolution. Because, my friends, they are in a sorry state. Because the one that coming to God must believe that he is. And when you believe that God exists, the Bible tells us that God will be your rewarder, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the thing that you ought to see God for more than the material and financial and the temporal blessings of this life is that of salvation. 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 Faith has everything to do with your salvation. As a matter of fact, we go to the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, and the eighth verse. And the Bible tells us clearly how we are saved. So if you want to be saved, it's time to listen up. And here God tells you how you can be saved. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, the Bible says here, for by grace are ye saved uh, through faith. Hallelujah. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Glory to God. So we are saved by the grace of God. But that grace is accessed by faith. You know, uh, grace is like the water coming through the tap. Uh, there's no scarcity of water. It's available for you. But sometimes because you do not have a bucket, you cannot make use of the water to do what you have to do, to cook and to do the other things, uh, to, to carry that water home or, or to use it wherever you need to use it, maybe to wash down the vehicle as the case may be. So faith is like that bucket, like that container that you can use to access the water of grace. And so, my friends, grace, marvelous grace, amazing grace is available for every one of us to be saved. But if we are going to access that saving grace, we must do so by faith. And that's why faith is so important, because it is indeed a victory that overcomes the world. And so my challenge to every one of us as you listen to my voice is to have faith in God. My friends, this is a concern of God because he asks the question, when a son of man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? My friends, faith in our world today is lacking. You see it by the scoffers, the doubters, the haters. What about you today when it comes to faith in God? Because you don't need to watch at the doubters, the haters, and the scoffers. You must look at the man, the woman, the boy, the girl in the mirror. You must look at yourself. You know, Jesus asked some folk one day, what do men say that I am? And they gave different answers about they say and them say and she say and he say. But then Jesus turned the spotlight and asked them directly, 
who do you say that I am? And my friends, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that question today. Peter responded in a very profound way. He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You see, my friends, you personally must have faith in God. Others may disbelieve, others may doubt, others may scoff, others may hate, but you must ensure that you have saving faith, my friend. You see, faith is important because that's the only way you can be saved. And faith is manifested in three significant ways that I want to talk about briefly tonight. These are the three ways in which faith can be manifested and must be manifested in your life if you're ever going to enter heaven like Enoch did. Firstly, faith is demonstrated in your life by means of prayer. The one who has faith in God will be one who prays to God. And if your prayer life is not what it ought to be, it is because you are lacking in faith. Because when you have faith in God, when the circumstances of your life come upon you day by day, guess what you do? You turn to God in prayer. You turn to the Lord in prayer. You say, it's me again, Lord, with a problem I cannot solve. I don't mean to bother you, but I need your help to go through. It's me again, Lord, with a prayer. Because when you have faith in God, you know where you can turn to in your circumstances, in your good times and in your bad times. Like the song says, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. That is real faith. So faith will cause you to be a man of prayer, a woman of prayer, a boy of prayer, a girl of prayer. So you ought to assess your prayer life. As a matter of fact, in Luke 18, verse 8, when Jesus asks, will there be faith on the earth when I come again? Uh, the background to this breakdown is really prayer. Because in verse 1, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus tells why he's going to give the parable that are found in the following verses. In verse 1, he says, the Bible says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. In other words, for this reason, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. In other words, when you have faith in God, you will pray about your circumstances and you will never give up. It is when you lose faith, that's when you give up. But when you still have faith, you will never, ever quit. You will not drop. You will not back down back out, back away, backtrack, back, back, and backslide. But you will press on because your faith will keep you keeping on in Jesus' name. My friends, today, there's a second way in which faith is manifested. So if you want salvation, you have to pray, turn to God, the source of salvation. Say, God, forgive me. Lord, I accept you in my life today. But the second thing that you ought to do to demonstrate your faith in God is this, obedience to the will of God. In other words, obedience to the word of God. Let's be even more direct than that. Obedience to the commandments of God. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 2, Revelation 14, verse 12, rather, Revelation 14, verse 12, the Bible says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So when you have faith in God, it will cause you to obey the word of God, the will of God, the commandments of God. Faith and obedience to the commandments of God go hand in hand. That's why the Bible says in our text, here is the patience of the saints. The saints have patience. They have perseverance. They persist. They don't give up. They don't quit because they have faith in God. And the Bible says, here they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, permit me to hasten to tell you uh, the third, the third manifestation 
of saving faith, victorious faith. And the third is baptism. Oh, you heard me right, baptism. So remember, number one, the one who is saved by grace through faith will be a person of prayer, will always be looking to God for the help, for the salvation, for forgiveness, for deliverance, for victory. Secondly, the one who has faith in God will be obedient to his commandment because faith and obedience go hand in hand. The Bible tells us faith without work is dead. And that Abraham demonstrated his faith by his obedience to the command of God. But the third thing that you ought to do to demonstrate that you have real saving faith, victorious faith, is that of baptism. Baptism. So permit me to go to my last text for tonight. Acts chapter 18 and verse 8. Acts chapter 18 and verse 8. Makes the point that a man who has seven faith, the woman who has seven faith, the girl, the boy who has seven faith will be baptized. And if the, you have heard these messages from our young ones, and this message tonight, and God has been speaking to you, and you refuse to surrender to him, in baptism is a reflection of a, an absence of saving faith. And you need to have that saving faith tonight, tonight, before our service comes to an end. And by the grace of God, you can pray to him and you can have that saving faith. So here, the Bible says in Acts 18, verse 8, And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed... On the Lord, in other words, he had faith in the Lord. Believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Christians hearing believed. And were baptized. And were baptized. So my friends, the one who believes God will surrender and manifest it through baptism. As a matter of fact, in Acts 16, verses 31 and onward, the Bible says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They see the jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? And the response came, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So faith. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. In other words, immediately. So let me recap. My friends, faith is indeed a victory. Don't let it be the missing ingredient in your life. Because if faith is missing in your life, I'm talking about faith in God, it means that you do not have victory. But if you want to have victory tonight, you must have saving faith. You must have faith in God. And your faith in God will be demonstrated in a life of prayer where you turn to God. It will be demonstrated in a life of obedience to the commandments of God. The song says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And thirdly, if you have not yet given your life to Jesus in baptism, your faith in God, that saving faith, that will cause you to have real victory today, my friends, will cause you to accept him in baptism. They believed and were baptized. It is something that we see repeatedly in the word of God. So I appeal to you wherever you are, to make that solemn decision tonight. Tonight, in order to demonstrate that decision of wanting to be that person of prayer, that person that will be obedient to the word and the commandments of God, and that person that will be baptized. My friends, there's some numbers on the screen that you can call. And you can call these numbers. And my friends, someone will be there to answer your call. And to assist you in making that surrender to Jesus Christ. Uh, you can see that decision card on the screen. 
and some and you can fill in the decision card, fill in the information and indicate your desire to serve Jesus, to be baptized as a token of expressing your faith, victorious faith, saving faith in God. So you do that right now for your own benefit, for your own salvation, so that you can have victory in this life and eternity in the life to come like Enoch. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for it. It is because you love us that you have given us this word tonight. We pray that everyone who's not saved, who have heard my voice, will accept Christ by faith and will be a person of prayer, a person of obedience to you and your commandments, and a person who will be baptized as you provide that opportunity and give them victory in this life and eternal life when Christ comes. Accept our prayer. We make it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor Scott, for this powerful message and those encouraging words. I'm sure that our viewers were inspired, empowered, and blessed. May God continue to use you for his glory. As we prepare to bring the curtains down on our time together tonight, please listen to the following announcements. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on Zoom for an hour of prayer. The Zoom ID should be displayed on the screen and it is 874-9040-9613, the passcode 013803. It continues on Thursday night at 8 p.m. using the same ID and passcode. Be sure to look out for our upcoming events on Mission Live. Tuesdays, we have our Pastor's Corner, which starts at 11.30 a.m. and also at 8 p.m. On Fridays, we have our Youth Live Unplugged, which begins at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service, remember, every Sabbath at 9 a.m. And our afternoon service, which is our Adventist youth service, which begins at 4 p.m. And don't forget to join us again next Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for another Sunday night service. What a blessing this evening has been. Thank you so much for staying with us to the end. Before I pray... I would just like to leave with you a short quotation from Martin Luther King Jr., which says, Faith is like taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Viewers, as you step out into each new day of this week, step out boldly, believing full-heartedly that God is in charge. Why? Because remember, faith is the victory. Please bow your heads with me as I pray. Wonderful God, we thank you for yet another service where we're blessed, rejuvenated for the week ahead. I pray for each viewer and each participant, Father, that the knowledge we may have acquired tonight will not only be for ourselves, but will also show in our lives and others may see you through us. Thank you again for your word and for your people. In your son's most wonderful name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening. See you again next time. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength.
signs have seen the King. I must tell all the world worship Him. In all the nations, in all the